right, all right. Happy Sunday, everyone. Happy Sunday. Hope everyone had an amazing Thanksgiving, and I hope you're ready for this last push, this last stretch of the semester coming up. So you guys are in my thoughts. You guys are in my prayers. I was just there not too long ago when you had to push and you had to grind for these last three or four weeks before winter break. Then you got finals coming up. It's so much in between Thanksgiving and winter break or Christmas break that goes into finishing your semester strong and, and getting that A and getting those last classes in and bumping up your GPA. I know, it's, I know it's, it can be very stressful going through these last three or four weeks. So I hope that everything went according to plan for Thanksgiving. You got a lot of rest, watched a lot of football, hung out with families. You know, your, your stomach was full. So I hope everything went well. Uh, this weekend, uh, this long weekend for Thanksgiving. So on this Mic Drop Mentorship, I want to talk to you guys about um, what you should be asking in your interviews. I know some of you may have had them already and may have some other ones coming up. Some of you may have your first one coming up soon. And, and I want to give you guys some value, some tips uh, on what to really ask. A lot of times we often focus on what, how, or we often focus on, on, on how to respond to questions. We're, we're focusing on what, what are they going to ask me? I need to be pre uh, prepared. And that's true. You do, you do need to be prepared on what's going to be coming at you and, and what your response should be and how you should respond and, and how your tone of voice and how your body language should be. That is all very, very, very important. However, one of the most underrated aspects or one of the most underrated things about physical therapy school interviews or interviews in general is, is what you're asking the people who are interviewing you. Because the questions they're being asked or the questions you're being asked are only a small percentage. The other 90, 70, 80% of the interview is you responding and you engaging in conversation and you asking them questions and engaging in dialogue. So yes, you do need to be focused heavily on what they're gonna be asking you and how you need to respond. However, the most underrated thing in my opinion is what you ask them how you turn that conversation around and that right there is something huge that right there is something huge so I'm gonna I'm gonna give you one of my best questions or in my opinion one of my best questions that worked for me and helped me kind of turn my interview not necessarily around but it it kind of changed the vibe of the interview and it made it more personal and more uh, laid back and more conversational so I'll share that with you guys in a second but what's going on Kareen, hope I'm saying that right. Um, Sean, how's it going? Courtney, Shanahan, what's going on? Welcome to the Accepted System. So glad you're in there. And all right, let's get started. Oops, let's get started, guys. So before I go into that, if you guys are watching on live or replay, what do you think you should be asking in an interview? What, like, if you had to think of the most important question or one of the most important questions to ask, what would... What's that in your opinion? Is it like clinicals? Is, is it scholarships? Is it, you know, how much tuition is? is? Is it, can I get a discount on tuition? You know, hook me up. My GPA is like this. My GRA is like that. Whatever it is. What, in your opinion, live or replay, what do you think the most, thing, the most important question is that you should be asking in an interview? I'm, I'm just curious. And, and I get this question a lot in regards to interviews. And, and I often say, and, and it's true, you have to ask what's important to you. You have to, what's up, Tim? Even, and this goes for you too, Tim. If you're in PA school, uh, applying to PA school, you got to know what to ask. So first and foremost, before I go into my question, you have to ask what's most important to you. I don't care what question I give you. I don't care what any C, um, CI or observation person, PT, PA gives you to ask. That's all good and fine. You can use it, but I don't want you just regurgitating it. Because if you just regurgitate a question and you don't have any personality or any flair or your passion does not come through, you're just going to sound like a robot and they're not going to accept you anyway. You're going to be like, well, this is what I was told to ask, so I'm going to ask it and they're going to see you right through that and it's not even going to matter. So first and foremost, you have to ask what's most important to you. If that's clinicals and where you're going to be on your four or five rotations, you got to ask that. If it's tuition, if it's the atmosphere, if it's how tests are going to work, if it's the NPTE pass scores, you have to ask what's most important to you first. That's first and foremost, because personality is a skill set in itself. 
You guys can write that down, put it in the comments, write down or keep in mind that personality is a skill set in itself. Write that down. Personality is a skill set. And that goes along with what I just said. If you're just regurgitating what I say or Joseph or somewhere on YouTube or some other blog, like, oh, yeah, that's a good question. Boom, I'll just say it. You have no passion. You have no intense behind it. You're not smiling. You're not engaged. They will see right through it. These guys aren't stupid. They know who to accept. They know how personalities are. They know how you are when you walk in the door. They interview and they see hundreds of applications. So you're not fooling anybody if it's not coming from a place of intent and in a place uh, from, from a genuine interest. So that's what you got to do. Ask what's most important to you, first of all. So now the question I asked, I'm going to tell you a story of what I used or one of the questions I used in my PT school interview. Um, so my, my interview was pretty cool. It was pretty great. It was laid back from the beginning. I interviewed with the clinical director of education. So everywhere that I go on the clinicals, he's the guy you go to when that time comes to pick your clinical spot. So he was super cool, super laid back. And, you know, he went through the normal questions. You know, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Why PT? Why Andrews? You know, all that, all that good stuff. And when it came time for me to ask questions, I asked about his specialty, of course. You know, how's clinical education work? How does this go? How does that go? Because I researched him. I knew who he was. I asked about him. So I went through all of that. But when it came time to my last question, I asked this. I said, what was your most um, interesting or valuable or what was your best experience as a physical therapist or your best experience as a teacher? Physical therapist or a teacher? So that was my question. What, what was your best experience or most memorable experience as a teacher or a physical therapist in your career? So then he stopped. He stopped and paused while I, while I was asking this question. And there was a, there was a bookshelf behind me, kind of, or to the side of me, kind of like this, kind of like this. And while I was talking, he just reached around me and reached in the bookshelf. And he was, he took out this binder. He took out this big binder and, and he opened it up to a certain page. And there was a patient in there laying on a hospital bed. You know, he had tubes all in him. He had a gown, you know you know, everything, the whole nine, as you would see someone in a hospital. And the certificate said, so there's a picture of the patient. Then on the other side, there was a certificate that was given to him by this patient. And on this certificate, it said, um, physical therapy angel. Then it said the interviewer's name, the clinical director's name. So basically, you know, blank, blank, uh, physical therapy angel, something like that, to that effect. Then he went on to tell me about this guy who never thought he could walk again, who thought he, he would be in a wheelchair, who thought this and that, who thought physical therapy could not help him, then throughout the course of his journey with this teacher, with this faculty member, with this physical therapist, he regained his ability to walk primarily, primarily through um, aquatic therapy, aquatic physical therapy, and then eventually land-based physical therapy. Then he worked up to it, and now he's fully functioning, he's walking and all that stuff. So that was his moment. He went on to tell me the story about how that, that, that was his best experience as a physical therapist. And the whole vibe changed. The whole interview experience changed. And I could see that his passion started to come out. I can see that everything that he loved about the profession came out in that story. Everything, no matter how hard his job was now, no matter how many difficult patients he had in the past, this experience pretty much said why he was in physical therapy. And what this really did, besides changing the, the vibe and the environment, is really kind of deeper than that. It's kind of deeper than that. It, it kind of solidified me in that experience with his best experience. So the fact that I asked him about that experience kind of psychologically bonded my experience with the interview with his best experience as a physical therapist. So when, when um, choosing time came around and you know, every two weeks or every week when they do this, when I came up on the screen or in their sheet of paper, whatever they did, he, he was probably remembering about how I asked him about his best experience. And now I am linked and I am bonded. I'm basically bonded to his best experience in physical therapy. So no matter how many hiccups I had, no matter how many times I was stumbling over my words, no matter how many times I quote unquote messed up or I thought I didn't do a good job, 
all those little things weren't really going to matter that much because of that story he told. Because of how I was more interested in his life and in his career and his physical therapy journey than myself. So it went a lot deeper than, oh, I'm just asking this question to be, you know, um, impressive or to, to check a box off or to be this or that. I was gen- genuinely interested in what his best experience as a physical therapist was, whether it was as a PT or a teacher. And that came through and he had a story to tell about it. And that bonded me to that story. And now that bonded me to his best experience in physical therapy. And now that bonded me to um, an emotional experience that came back up when it was ready to choose me as an applicant. So it was just one small question, not, not anything big. I just asked him, what was his best experience about physical therapy? If I'm going into this profession to be like you, what, what should I look forward to? What is the best thing about physical therapy? Is, that, is it all doom and gloom? Is it all documentation? Is it all students who just don't listen to you? Why should I be in this profession? That's basically what I was asking. Before I take this step, before I take this leap, before I invest all this money into your school and this profession and a lifelong career, in your perspective, why should I be a physical therapist? You're asking me why I want to be in PT and why I want to go to PT school and why I want to be in physical therapy. But from you, from your perspective, you've been in here 20 something years. What is your best experience? Tell me, sell me on why I should keep going in physical therapy. Tell me something that kept you going. Tell me about a patient that would be my patient in the future. Tell me about how I can handle this experience when I go through it, you know, five, 10 years from now. Tell me about something passionate that I can look forward to. That's basically what I was saying in this question. You guys can flip that around. You guys can remix this. You guys can do anything with that question to ask it however you want. But the main thing, just don't regurgitate what I said. That's why I said that at the beginning. You have to be genuinely interested and why they care about the question you're asking them. So I was genuinely interested. I basically said, hey, hey, Mr. Something blank, blank, blank. Why, why physical therapy? What's the best experience? Like, why, why should I be getting into this thing? Like, what's in your experience, in your, in your lifetime of your career? Tell me about a story for you. So I pretty much flipped that whole interview situation back on him. Not in a negative way, not on, you know, the fact that I was putting it in, in the hot seat or anything like that. I, would, I just wanted to know. Physical therapy, I'm getting into this. What do I have to look forward to? Oh, snap, that's coming up. Sean, this is such a great topic. Every pre-PT has a story. Exactly. And the thing about that is, he was a pre-PT at once, uh, you know, once in his career as well. So even if you want to say that in that, in that regards, what, if you were a pre-PT or when you were a pre-PT, what were your struggles? How did you get to where you are now? You know, what did you have to go through? Did you have to apply twice? What schools did you apply to? You know, what made you want to apply to physical therapy? It doesn't have to be the exact words I used, but you have to come across as more interested in that person than trying to be interesting. And a lot of times we say that, and a lot of times we just blow through it, and a lot of times we're like, yeah, that's a good quote. Yeah, that's, that's cool, man, he's spitting fire, that's, that's dope, and, and I'm gonna write it down and I'll do it. But we really, never, we really never dive deep into it, right? We never really dive deep into what that means. What does it mean to be more interesting or more interested in that person than interesting? How does that really come across and how does that look? What is that experience like when you really dive into it and really take that into action? So I just wanted to bring you guys into my past pre-PT experience in, in my interview and what it was like. It was just a simple question. It, I had it in my list, but it wasn't rehearsed. It wasn't, you know, robotic. It wasn't, you know, just regurgitated. It wasn't something I heard from someone else. I just wanted to know, what, what is physical therapy really like? Yes, I, I see about it on paper. I read about it. I hear about other people's um, school experiences. But since I have you here now in a one-on-one setting and you ask me all these questions, I got a question for you. Physical therapy, what was your best experience? Or you can even say, what's your worst experience? What, what should I look out for? Whatever it is, you have to come across as genuine. So that's pretty much it. That was my number one question that pretty much took my interview to the next level. 
And in my opinion, I believe that came up later when they had to choose me. It bonded that emotional experience to me in a good way. So he was like, man, now Casey is solidified with one of my best experiences in physical therapy. Because how many pre-PTs probably even took the time to ask him that? How many pre-PTs probably even cared about what it was? So not only was that a good emotional experience tied with me now, but hey, Casey actually, he actually cares about me. He took the time to even think about that question, write it down, you know, and, and eventually ask it in the, in the interview. So if he cares that much about me, just the interviewer, how much is he going to care about his fellow students, you know, the fellow patients and, and his clinical experience and his fellow patients and, and colleagues once he gets out into the field? A small question. That's why I say the questions are probably the most underrated things you can probably do in an interview. In my opinion, it's the most underrated thing. The questions you ask are the most underrated aspect of the interview because they probably heard the answers to every question they're going to ask a million times over. They probably heard you guys rehearse it. They probably know the same answers. They know this and know that. They're just checking boxes off their list and they want to see what you're going to say. Yes, that's important. But you really shine and you really stand out when you ask different questions. So that was my best question. What was your best experience as a physical therapist? Super easy, super simple. Use it if you guys want. The people who have went through our Kickstarter and our Kick It Up A Notch program already know that one and they know so many more questions to ask as well. So it goes deeper than the questions I give them to be impressive and they're gonna come across as impressive when they use them. But the basic underlying premise is that you have to be more interested in them than interesting. So I just want to break that down for you. Everybody who is already in our Kickstarter and Kick It Up A Notch program and took advantage of that, uh, that Black Friday sale already knows this and so many more to set themselves apart. So if you want it, I actually extend it. I'm going to extend it to Cyber Monday. Cyber Monday, the, the sale is going to be done and the code is PPG Black Friday 18. So Cyber Monday, Monday midnight, the Black Friday sale is going to be done. 25% off Kickstarter, 25% off Kick It Up A Notch. You guys get in there, learn those questions to ask, learn how to answer the questions, because I know that's important as well, and learn everything else we tell you in that course to set yourself some part. Because people are going through it right now. We have so many people that took advantage of it. If you're not taking advantage of it now, these same people who you are on this freaking live stream with are going to take your spot. I am not playing because it happened to me. People took my spot before, they ended up failing out, and that could have been me. So people can take your spot. It's not a joke. I'm not just saying it to say it. It's true. So if you don't want that to happen to you, start now. Get in Kickstarter. Get in Kick It Up A Notch. Learn everything you have to know so that is not you. Learn those questions. Learn how to answer them. Learn the fundamentals. You guys will see everything in there as well. Uh, tag me on the post. Um, okay, yeah, I'll take care of you. Um, actually, Sean, just scroll down in the Facebook page here. Just scroll down. I did a video earlier on. Uh, just go to preptgrind.com or go to our Instagram. The link is in the bio there as well. Just go to um, our Instagram. The link is in the bio or just scroll down to the video I did. Um, earlier today, but I'll tag you in it. Don't worry uh, to get in there. And if anybody else wants to know or wants to be tagged in it, just let me know. I'll tag you in it or just go to our Instagram or look out for an email I'm going to send later on tonight about the deal as well. So it's going to be on until Monday. I'm extending it. It's not going to be over tonight. It's going to be over Monday, Cyber Monday, uh, tomorrow midnight. The deal is going to be done. Black Friday sale is going to be done for Kickstarter and for Kick It Up A Notch. Then also the shirts, the gear, pre-PT grind gear, $5 off of everything in the store. So go to www.preptgrind.com. You guys can get $5 off of everything. So that's it. 25% off, off Kickstarter, 25% off Kick It Up A Notch, and $5 off of everything. Sean and anybody else, I'll tag you in the post. Make sure you get in there as well. But, yo, that's pretty much it. Be more interested than interesting. That is my number one question. I want you guys to ask in any format to make yourself different and stand out is what was your best experience as a physical therapist? That's it. Super simple, super easy. Take that with you. Tag your friends. Share it out. Invite your friends to this group and uh, get in Kickstarter. Get in Kick It Up A Notch and, and stop playing around. Stop playing around with their career. The application cycle is going to be here before you know it. 
it's pretty much already December. You have seven, eight months until the application cycle opens up again. So you have to have everything done in about seven or eight months. So it's coming sooner than you think. If you don't want somebody to take your spot, get in our program. So that's pretty much it. See you next time on a Mic Drop Mentorship. Thank you.